Hello there and welcome back to the channel. In this video I'm going to be talking about the DJI OcuSync Air System with the DJI Goggles Race Edition and specifically around some information for fixed wing users. So if you want to use this in a fixed wing aircraft there's some things you need to know and I'm going to explain that to you. But I'm also going to talk about the latest firmware update that came out a couple of days ago because there's some important stuff in there as well. So before I get started I have it here on a PixHawk 2 system with the OcuSync Air system mounted on top. That's about as far I'm going to get into this with this setup but I am going to do another video on connecting to PixHawk specifically because the Air system does support Mavlink for communication. Before we get on to fixed wing, the first thing I'm going to talk about is the firmware update. So on the 26th of the 4th, they released version 1.0.3.0 for both the E unit and the DJI Goggles Race Edition. Now, just so you are aware, you will need to update both of these units separately, the E unit via DJI Assistant 2, and they recommend using version 1.2.3 minimum, and you can download this from the downloads page at DJI. I'll also stick a link to that in the description for the video and then you also hook the goggles up and update them as well. One tip is that when you are updating the ear system make sure your camera is connected so you do need to update the ear system which then also updates the firmware on the camera itself. As for changes well they've added some more OSD options which are really good. They have now added fixed wing information for altitude, GPS signal strength so it now shows you your GPS sat count if you're using a flight controller that has that information and it also now gives you latitude and longitude readings again if you're using a GPS equipped flight controller that is passing that information over Mavlink. On the Mavic Air they've added support for active track and head tracking flight with that aircraft and they've also updated how the camera behaves to changing in light conditions. On the original firmware, the changes in automatic gain control was quite aggressive and stepped. So if you were suddenly in a bright condition and you changed to dark or vice versa, the camera would take a bit of time to react to those changes. However, the AGC is a lot better on the newest firmware and the camera changes instantly almost like you would expect on an analog camera. They've also updated the air unit to support XFAT as well. Next, I'm going to talk about the OcuSync Air system and using it in a fixed wing application because I keep seeing these questions cropping up time and time again and there are a couple of things you need to be aware of. The first thing is it will work very similar to any other FPV system you have used before. The difference with the OcuSync Air system, unlike analog, is it is capable of transmitting just video or it is able to do two-way communication and transmit video back to the goggles, but also transmit the control link back to the OcuSync Air system. The reason for that is as follows. The Air system supports both 2.4 and 5.8 gigahertz. If you were using it as just a video transmitter, you would normally have to use it on 5 gigahertz because your control signal would be on 2.4, like on my Tyrannus. And if you put the OcuSync Air system on 2.4, it would pretty much destroy your control signal and you wouldn't be able to use the aircraft. To get around this, DJI have made the option of hooking your Tyrannus or any other radio that it supports up to the DJI goggles via a cable and then it will transmit your signal for the control over the wireless system to the ear unit and then that is outputted via SBUS. That means you're not getting the problem of your transmission signal and your video being on the same band or separate bands and you're then able to use the ear system on 2.4 gigahertz to get the best possible range. Now what you decide to do with that SBUS output is up to you, however there are some things I need to make you aware of. You can convert that SBUS output to PWM if you wish and you could use something like this which is the RMILEC Signal Converter Version 3 and this converts PPM, SBUS and PWM. So you could put your SBUS into this and then connect your direct 
control surfaces servos directly into this and it would work. However, there is something to be aware of. The OcuSync Air system does not support last frame hold. So when the signal drops, all of the control surfaces and outputs would return to neutral because the way the S bus output works, its fail safe is over an S bus flag. There is no last frame hold, therefore the control surfaces would go back to center and then your aircraft would probably spiral into the ground into a short death. So it's worth being aware of that you do not want to use the air system without a flight controller. It has not really been designed to be used without a flight controller. The outputs from this could still be converted to PPM but ideally it needs to go to a flight controller via S bus and that way it would trigger any failsafe settings correctly and your aircraft would return or it would at least do the action you have programmed the flight controller to do. The air system does not have the ability to be pre-programmed to either hold the last stick position, default to this failsafe position or something like that. Even if you set that on your radio, because the control link would be going through the air system, it would not be able to output it that way. So you really do need to use this with a flight controller. If you are using a flight controller, you only need to use one that supports S bus input and it has the capability of doing Mavlink for your telemetry data. Other than that, the only other thing you need to be aware of is the OcuSync Air system does get quite hot. So if you're going to bury this into the frame or into the fuselage of an aircraft, make sure it has airflow going over it. You do not want this to overheat because it will just shut the FPV off and you would suddenly lose your camera signal. As I've said in my other videos, it does support full head tracking via the DJI goggles, via the PPM output on the side, and you will need one of these adapters to do that. Please check out one of my other videos on explaining how to do that, but it does mean you can stick your FPV camera on a gimbal and do the head tracking in both quad and fixed wing applications. Other than that, that's pretty much all you specifically need to know. And other than the fact it doesn't have last frame hold and it does get hot, it would work pretty much the same as any other video transmitter and the basic same rules do apply. If you do have any questions about using the OcuSync Air System, no matter if it's fixed wing, quad or boat or anything else, please do put them in the comments for this video. I will try to answer any questions I have on this. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please do subscribe to the channel. There are some links to some of the things that I've seen in this video as well as some of the things I've mentioned. So please do go check them out and I will do another one again soon.